and I'm really very happy to be able to introduce our first speaker. Our first speaker is Dr. Sanaya Netanyahu. Sanaya is the program manager at the European Centre for Environment and Health at the WHO Regional Office for Europe. And Sanaya, you were also the chief scientist at the, the Ministry of Environmental Protection in Israel. You have a deep understanding. Please come up on stage. The floor is yours. Just for clarification, I am the former chief scientist. Uh -huh. So good morning, everybody. What I will be trying to do today is um, to share with you uh, the WH mandate, what, how we get our mandate, and also specifically on environment and health. And with that, I will also cover um, the last uh, meeting that we had, the seven ministerial conference on environment and health just now in July in Budapest, and the declaration that came out of that. Uh, the second topic I, that I was asked to cover is a little bit on the burden of disease and also in SDGs. Those are two main reports that uh, background report that uh, we prepared for the ministerial conference. And I have a um, sample of those reports, but I also have cards uh, with QRs that you can actually take and um, um, have the link for those reports. And the third topic that I will um, cover today is the One Health. I am part of the WHO working group on One Health uh, in the WHO um, uh, regional office for Europe. I will also emphasize the environmental factor uh, that related to that, but I will also uh, try to put the case that this is not just about infectious diseases, the AMR, the zoonotics, and uh, food safety, but it also has much to do with non-communicable diseases, with, you know, with, uh, with pollution and also with injuries. Um, while I'm Going through my talk, what I invite you is to link to what um, uh, Joel said yesterday, um, that we need to think about, do we have the right resources? Do we have the right competencies? Do we need to bring more people to the table? Uh, do we have the right structure of governance to handle all those things? Because we have a triple crisis, and we have lots of approaches to deal with them, but we also want to add on top of that the One Health approach. Okay, so there are lots of things going on, and in addition, it was mentioned yesterday, we also have additional crisis, social crisis, and, and, and we have war, and we have emergencies, we have uh, earthquakes, we have uh, uh, different other um, uh, things that are happening in the region um, as we speak. So, basically, ministries of health um, have to deal with all that, and what I'm also inviting you to think is not just in the context of the EU, but also outside the EU. Because there is a huge gaps in resources and abilities, governments, structures in non-EU countries, outside in our WHO European region. Um, so I'm from the WHO um, European Centre for Environment and Health. And the center is a center of excellence. Uh, we support uh, member states uh, with um, uh, state-of-the-art evidence. We collect evidence. We collect good um, evidence um, on existing and emerging environment uh, and health risks. We also help uh, and support uh, member states to implement international uh, treaties and commitments. We develop uh, normative work. For example, the air quality guidelines comes from, from, from the WHO regional office in Europe, from our office, even though it's a, a global product. Uh, we also develop policies and we support member states um, in developing uh, capacities and um, also uh, help them in to implement uh, various environment and health policies. We are located in Bonn and we are part of the WHO European region, which covers and helps uh, and support 53 member states from Central Asia and Russia in the east, south is Israel, and then all across the Balkans, the EU and the Nordic countries. So it's, it's quite, of a quite a bit of, uh, of a challenge. 
Uh, the first uh, thing that uh, you know is governing the mandate, etc., for many of the for all UN agencies, actually, including us, is the that is the 2030 agenda. And um, we are responsible also in the implementation of, uh, of all monitoring of the good health um, and, um, and well-being. This is number three, the SDG number three. But as you can see, it links to everything. It actually links to, to, to any of the other SDGs. And how we ensure that people enjoy the highest level of health and well-being through their lives is, is a major uh, challenge. The second thing that uh, we have is two frameworks, and it's important to understand it because we are not just, you know, operating as we wish. We are actually operating according to the mandate that we receive from the member states in our region. So um, one governing thing is the, th the 13 general uh, program of work, which is a global one. This is all member states in the world, which has three priorities. Uh, one is the you know, healthier population. One, the second one is universal, universal health coverage. And the third one deals with health emergencies. So basically, uh, what we do is we provide technical support that um, advance and promote all those three but we also provide humanitarian help when it comes to emergencies. Within the European region, we also have a framework from 2020 to 2025, which mirrors basically the global effort. But it's really interesting. If you look at the European program of word, you would not find even one time the word environment or climate or pollution or chemicals. But we are very happy with the healthier population because that's what we do. So um, uh, we also have um, another strategic paper uh, or document, uh, which is a global document. Uh, it's called the Global Strategy on Health and Environment and Climate Change with six objectives listed here, primary prevention, cross-sectoral action, strengthen health sector, build support, enhance evidence and communication, and monitoring. So basically, this gives us the mandate. In addition, specifically on environment and health within the European region, since 1989, we have a ministerial uh, set up for um, environment and health, where we actually convening the two ministries together. And this is a very unique thing, because oftentimes, the first time ministries are meeting each other, it's in, around our desk or tables or meetings or whatever. So oftentimes, they don't know who is their counterpart in the other office. Now, I, I have seen it in my eyes, not once, not twice, but many, many times. And it shows us how uh, delicate these issues of talking to each other, of developing vocabulary, having the right governance. Not many countries have it by law that they have to consult formally and work together and move together. And again, please think outside the EU. And since then, we have every six or seven years ministerial conference. The last one was, as I just said, in Budapest. Budapest was very special. Because if until then, in Ostrava in 2017, we looked at the environment and health topics in silos, okay? Like, for example, in 2017, in Ostrava, we had seven priorities, and I will mention them later. Um, you know, chemical, water, um, uh, waste management, contaminated sites, climate change. It was so very separate. We had a huge jump in Budapest where we agreed, uh, we convened, we were more than 600 people, 40, 43 member states out of the 53 attended. We had about 30, more than 30 ministers, deputy ministers, state secretary, ambassadors from both sectors, right? I mean, we're not, we're not ambassadors, but today other ministers. Um, it was a very interesting um, meeting because in this meeting, for the first time, we looked into the triple crisis. We put the triple crisis, member states supported it and actually wanted it. We look at the topics, so we are not losing the silo approach. We still need to deal with the silo, with the, the, the specific topics. But we also put the triple crisis, the interlinkages between the different topics, and obviously the common denomination is health. And this was, um, it was agreed, um, 
Uh, in fact, as we talk right now, in two hours or so, uh, in Astana, the member states are convening, the ministries of health are convening for the regional committees, the regional committee 73, and they will have to uh, adapt the, this, uh, the, this uh, declaration. Member states already adapted and, and agreed, but today is formally by the regional committee, is going to be discussed at 11.30 our time. So in any case, in the declaration itself, we focus on accelerating action. So this conference is about you know, being proactive, but we're saying not just proactive, but we need mechanism to accelerate every action. So every action that has been noted in the declaration, and you're invited to look at the declaration on the web, uh, has um, a mechanism to accelerate these activities. What can we do? like, you know, during this next coming years in order to accelerate, um, you know, climate change and health, how we can have member states adapting uh, national plans for, for climate and health, et cetera, et cetera. Also, uh, we wanted to understand how we will forward better from the COVID-19 and um, also look into urban resilience and then also how we protect vulnerable population. Um, the Budapest Declaration uh, also has, as I said, a roadmap with very detailed information about the actions and how to accelerate those actions. Um, it uh, emphasizes um, also uh, what is needed for transformational change. This is um, uh, in, um, it, it talks also about partnership. For example, two of the partnerships. Uh, one led by Germany and in collaboration with Georgia is about biomonitoring and still member states in the region are invited to join. Another one is led by Ireland, this climate change in healthcare facilities. So there are lots of partnerships which will make member states to interact, exchange information, work together, build capacity together, etc. We also want to look into governance, how we are going to improve governance, human resources, capacities, competency. Do you know, does anybody know when was the last time that environment and health competencies analysis was done? 25 years ago. 25 years ago. So now, uh, in my program, we are leading this project uh, on, on environment and health com uh, competencies uh, and, and uh, professional portfolios for the, for this, uh, to cover the to different topics under the triple crisis. Um, we also decided with member states to advance research related to that and it also, all, then finally engagement of uh, youth. For this meeting, we, as I said, we, we produced uh, several interesting background documents. Three of them actually was a stock taking. One is about the portfolio. So if you want to know what's going on in member states within Europe in environment and health, look at this one on the, on the portfolio. And then we also looked at the Health of the uh, healthy environment in the WHO European region, um, which actually cover burden of disease and the SDGs. So now I see that I have only three and a half minutes left, and <laughs> it's going to be a very big challenge to finish that on time. I will just give you, I uh, will shower you with, with a few, um, you know, data points. You can you can see you can uh, check it check it in this um, in this uh, well, publications. So we looked in the various uh, topics, and for example, the ambient and household air pollution. What's the situation? situation right now, 97% of the population within the European region is exposed uh, to PM 2.5 uh, concentration above our recommendation. We have um, a burden of disease of something that is actually preventable, 569 premature deaths attributed to ambient air pollution, 154 attributed to indoor air pollution. Um, I will just move quickly. When it comes to wash, water, you, th you would think that we all have it, right? We all have water, clean water. No, it's not the case. It's only seven out of 10 people in our region have access to safely managed sanitation services. 2.7 million people relied on surface water. 350,000 people do not have 
the toilet, right? Uh, we have um, 33,500 deaths that are attributed to inadequate wash condition, 92 uh, deaths per day, okay? So I think by the time we'll finish this session today, the plenary number three, six people will die just because of wash-related issues. And obviously it causes uh, health impact. When it comes to chemical, this is the first time that we have, that we publish this number. Uh, headquarters is publishing globally, so this is the first time we have estimates for, uh, for Europe, 200, almost 270,000 deaths attributed to exposure of chemicals or group of chemicals such as pesticides, occupational uh, carcinogens, lead and occupational particles, but this is an underestimate, you all know that. It is, is a very, uh, it's probably low number. It, it relies on expert opinion, etc. basically extracted from the global uh, estimates. So, um, and, and um, you know, if I go on and on, on on more details, which I don't have the time, on climate change and, uh, uh, we are losing so many people because of storms, because of heat waves, because of floods. Um, and again, I don't have the time if I need to be, <laughs> to, to be with this 15 minutes. We looked into radiation, 20, almost 25,000 people are dying because of lung cancer caused by re res uh, residential uh, radon. So, I mean, the numbers are, uh, are amazing. And we looked at the number of healthy cities. Um, healthy cities, more than 100 million of people are ex exposed to harmful, harmful levels of, um, of environmental noise pollution. This is seen from 2017, this data. So this is just an example. Um, so there is, go if you go on and on and on and on, and you would see what's happening in the region, uh, you, you come to realize that there are lots of challenges to both ministries, ministries of health and ministries of environment. And oftentimes we find in ministries of health that there is one or two people dealing with environmental issues, except wash. Wash is usually a very traditional topic. And so the other things that we said, okay, we're investing so much. How are we doing? We are midway to 2030 to accomplish the 2030 SDG agenda. So again, you have to trust me on that. Uh, we looked at the seven topics because that was, was in Ostrava and we wanted to tell member states how they were doing since Ostrava to today, to Budapest, after seven years uh, in implementing the SDGs. So you, have to, you would have to trust me on that. I will jump immediately to this, to this graph. Uh, yellow, orange, and red are not good. It's either stagnating or increasing a little bit, but not in the right speed, or declining. So this is, for example, just one thing on the chemicals, because I have it also on the other indicators. We have 30 indicators. So bottom line, this is how it is now, and this is how we are progressing. If we continue business as usual until 2030, if we are continuing business as usual until 2030, we will not be captured that. This is just example, three indicators related to chemicals. But you have to trust me on this. The 30 indicators that we have on environment and health, on wash, on, 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 on uh, climate, on any other topics that I mentioned before, you, you, you wouldn't find almost, uh, you would find only few green. So the condition, the situation is, is not really good. We are not really doing well. So what needs to be done? What needs, the huge gaps, governance, competence, resources, etc., etc. With this, I'm moving quickly to One Health. I know that I'm beyond time, but I will, I will cover One Health. I want for once, uh, for uh, the benefit of those who are not familiar with the new definition of One Health. Just to read it, please. One Health is an integrated, unifying approach that aims to sustainably balance and optimize the health of people, animals, and ecosystems. For those of you who hear the word optimize and, and hear a bit of economics, yes, it is. It recognizes the health of humans, domestic, and wild animals, plants, and wider environment, including ecosystems that are closely linked and interdependent. The approach mobilizes multiple sectors, disciplines, and communities at varying level of society 
to work together to foster well-being and tackle threats to health and ecosystem while addressing also collective need for clean water, energy and air, safe and nutrition food, tackling action on climate change and contributing to sustainable development. For many, many years, if you look at the literature, One Health, is not, which is not a new concept, was dealt between the, the health sector and the agricultural sectors. And they lived happily together very nicely. Then came the pandemic and everybody renewed the topic of One Health. But then, and people understood that we have to bring the environment. Why environment? Because land degradation, urbanization, because biodiversity loss, because of climate change and because of biodiversity loss. We have to bring it uh, into, into the table. Oftentimes, when you hear uh, One Health, you hear people dealing with zoonotic diseases, food safety, and AMR. When you ask them about the environment, oh yeah, okay, we need to consider that, but it's not really done. Two years ago, I was asked to give a talk on this topic, and I, I find actually that the environment is the neglected part of One Health. But um, before that, I will mention what's happening at the global level. As you already know, probably, the quadrupartite, there is a quadrupartite that exists, and the work is being done by WHO, UNEP, uh, UA, the World Organization for Animals Health, and by um, FAO. And we are together at a global level created uh, a six action tracks, and this is actually the joint plan of action that advise the UN system on how we should proceed on that. So somebody was said, maybe we need a One Health Institute or a global level. So there, this, is, this is what is being done. It's the quadrupartite that sit together and try to plan. Number one, tra the track number one talks about capacities uh, to strengthen health system. Tracks number two, three, four, and five talks about uh, re-emerging zoonotic epidemics and pandemic, also endemic zoonotic and neglected tropical diseases, food safety, and AMR. And then there is track number six, which I invite you please to read. Number six, it talks about the integrating of the environment. Now you can come and say, well, actually, huh, environment actually affects all the other tracks as well. Yes, you're right. And there was a dilemma at the beginning if it should be integrated in all other tracks or we should be standalone. The decision was to, to put it as a standalone, not because it should not be integrated, but in addition, we should give it a special attention. Um, Now, um, towards the end of the year, the quadrupartite, the global quadrupartite, will also publish the implementation document on, 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 the, on the JPA, on the Joint Plan of Action, special, um, uh, focusing on three areas, governance, policies, legislation, and financing, and advocacy. This is one bundle. The second one, organize, organizational development and implementation of uh, sectoral um, integration. And number three is how we deal with data, evidence, knowledge, and exchange. Now, this is very tricky. Um, the previous speaker talked about wildlife, right? There is no institution, a global institution, or UN institution that collect or, or reports or data on wildlife. So we don't know the health of wildlife. We do have the FAO and who are who's collecting stuff that related to domestic, uh, to um, livestock, etc. But wildlife, we don't have any agency that collects any data. There are lots of lots of issues of sharing data, reporting data, etc., etc. So the governance mechanism and the, the real cooperation is still remains a major, major uh, challenge. Uh, within Europe, we also have a quadrupartite for the region itself, and we also uh, understand that there is a very difficult uh, political uh, lim and limitation in political understanding of what it means, how is it related to planetary health, uh, why do we need to, you know, who has the mandate to implement it, because uh, we are Ministry of Health, we are Ministry of Environment, now we want us to do it together, but there is no mandate, there is no, like, overarching office. Is it the Prime Minister's office, this is the Deputy Prime Minister, who is actually 
coordinating these whole things because it's now it's between many, many ministries. Uh, there is uh, a limit, limited understanding of the, of the benefit of this approach, uh, so we need to bring forward the economic argument. I'm working on something like this right now, and also FAO working globally to bring the argument, uh, the economic argument and the return on investment. Um, we don't need to wait for this results. We just need to proceed and keep doing it. We need to, uh, we know that there are in favor, in, favor, in favorable existing governance, institutional and legal and financial um, arrangements, limited flexibility in allocating financial resources, uh, limitation in implementation, I mentioned some before, and, and also a lack of uh, political will, but also competencies that are missing, lots of competencies that are missing. Now, this is a one, wonderful example to show that you cannot just remain in your own silo, you have to reach out to other things. We've done a few things also on the role of the environment. I have the, the, the card here, if anybody wants to see, to look at. And we also looked at how the environment is related. And, and again, I claim that also we need to look at pollution, we need to look at climate change and biodiversity, land use degradation, and how it affects and related also true animals so and crops and uh, affecting also at the, at the end of the day uh, human health. I wanted to mention lastly that One Health is part of the declaration, and with this I will be wrapping the declaration, the, Bo the Budapest declaration that was uh, uh, signed um, in July. Uh, have a new component um, on, on nature, biodiversity, and includes the integration of One Health. Member states already committed to do that, so we can, we can actually help support them on this, and they, um, they will integrate to the environment dimension into the One, one Health. Uh, we also know that uh, in, the, um, in the Montreal, the Common Montreal Global Biodiversity Framework, the, the GBF, of the Convention of the Biolog Bio uh, Biological Diversity. Also, there is a request to include the integration of the One Health approach in national biodiversity strategy. So there is another element. And the last element is that very recently, the World Health Organization, uh, I think it was in May, uh, passed a resolution to member states uh, all around the world on chemicals and uh, waste and pollution and human health. And surprisingly enough, member states have requested from the Director General to promote through base, risk-based assessment and through research um, you know, the issues of waste, uh, uh, of chemicals and waste and uh, pollution uh, using also the one, the one Health approach. So some elements, the political elements are there. It's now up to us to implement them. Thank you. So now, thank you very much. Um, yesterday we talked about needing to be broad and have a, a sort of coherent and comprehensive understanding. I think you've done an amazing job in taking us from the SDGs, explaining the One Health aspects, presenting some of the operationalization of those concepts in political declarations, ministerial meetings, in the way in which different agencies are collaborating uh, to, to put them into strategies and identify action plans. Thank you very much for that very broad and uh, interesting presentation, which actually began to pick up some of those issues from the workshop. Do we need a common ground and set of understandings around One Health? And I think you've set out perhaps how that is beginning to be built and integrated into uh, those political processes. Uh, it really struck me, of course, what was it? More than uh, you know, eight at least of those indicators for the SDGs are going backwards. Well, you know, that is you know, a, a really terrible. A quarter of a million people in Europe are dying because of chemical pollution. These are some very hard-hitting facts that we've got.